Are you trying to learn Python and struggling to stay focused like I did last year? Streamlit made it possible for me to turn that learning process into fun or to add the fun component into it. It feels great to be at work again. Huh? Engineering. Fix the captain transporter. Funny the captain. Oh man. So glad I learned Python last year. It really comes in handy now. I can fix this quickly. One of the goals I set for myself in 2022 was to learn Python. I bought a book. I know, old school, right? I did some online courses. Learning on the job is tough. I've been trying to learn Python, but between work and life, it's been slow going. As I came to terms that learning a new programming language isn't exactly a breeze, I started to lose a little bit of my motivation. And that's exactly when I discovered a Python framework that changed everything for me. Streamlit! Hey guys, welcome to Better Pre-Sales with Sasha. I'm a senior sales engineer working for a leading cloud software company. And today's topic is about my newfound passion for learning Python using a really cool library called Streamlit. Streamlit, Streamlit. Streamlit, Streamlit. Why is it relevant for me as an engineer working in sales? Streamlit is a perfect intersection of the goals I want to achieve both personally and on the job. I am finally learning Python in a fun way and it doesn't feel like a job. I'm building awesome end user applications, which is my passion. I'm able to visualize any data with a level of simplicity and effectiveness that I wasn't able to do before. With Streamlit, people can understand data and machine learning models and they don't have to be data engineers or data scientists. By showing live applications instead of PowerPoint slides, I am able to reach completely new audiences as part of my sales engineering job. I can build demos and prototypes in a matter of hours, which is exactly what my job as sales engineer requires. Last year, as I discovered Streamlit and rekindled my passion for learning Python, I've built several Streamlit applications, I've written a couple of blog posts, and I've even made a video. Streamlit simply allows me to be more efficient at my job and to still follow my passion of building great user experiences. Let me show you my Streamlit development flow. I use the following components. Anaconda, VS Code, Streamlit docs and community pages, and Git and GitHub. Python versus Anaconda. Anaconda is a company that provides distribution of Python libraries. Instead of having to go to different places to download Python libraries, I use the Anaconda distribution to find everything in one single place. Even more cool than this, if that's possible, Anaconda makes sure that there is no mismatch between library versions. Mismatch between library versions, what does that mean? Ever heard of dependency hell? As a software engineer, everyone runs into this sooner or later, and it's not limited to Python. It happens regardless of which programming language you're using. Let's have a look at a Python example. I'm building a brand new app and specifying the packages I want to use in a requirements file. I'm just using two libraries. I'll try to install this into my environment, and I'll get a conflict. The Beanie package is dependent on a different version of the click package from the one that I specified, so I need to fix that. I'll try a different version of the click package. I have no idea if this version exists. I'll just try my luck. Try installing again and it doesn't exist. I am getting frustrated, but luckily the error message tells me which versions are available. So I'll go with the 712, which is the only possible version I can use. Fingers crossed. It works. We resolve the dependency. Now imagine doing this across teams, organizations, the whole company, the frustration just grows and this is what we call the dependency hell. This is where Anaconda's package manager called Conda comes to the rescue. I managed my Python environment using the Conda package manager and it guarantees that I will not run into a version conflict as it exactly knows which versions of libraries to install for you. And the third cool thing I use Anaconda for is the freedom to use different distribution channels. 
Specifically, when I'm working on a project that uses Snowflake, I use the Snowflake Anaconda channel or repo to make sure that libraries in my local environment are in sync with libraries that Snowflake supports. With that, I can deploy and run my Python code seamlessly on the Snowflake cloud. Although I specified only a handful of libraries I need, these have a ton of dependencies and Anaconda took care of installing all those in proper versions. You can see all libraries in your current conda environment by running conda list. How do you write your source code? There's a lot of options out there from simple text editors to complex integrated development environments, IDEs, where you can develop your code, run it, test it, debug it, and see the output of your application. Personally, I'm somewhere in the middle. I like to automate as much as I can, but I also like to keep it lean. VS Code is just perfect for me. Although it has thousands of plugins, you can just take it and run with it out of the box and it will work fine with most of the tools you use. It will recognize what you already have installed in your environment, like different Python versions or Conda environments, and you can just run with it without having to configure it extra. Whether you're a beginner or an expert coder, I highly recommend VS Code. Where do I go when I have an idea that I want to turn into an app? Well, the first thing I check is the Streamly documentation. I usually go to the API reference to look at the gallery of existing Streamly elements. And when I see something interesting and I want to see how it's used, for instance, LaTeX support, if I want to write some mathematical formulas, I'll just have a look at the code and probably copy it into my application and start from there. For even more inspiration and understanding the art of possible, there's a gallery of Streamlit apps running live that you can just play with. This is awesome as I keep finding hidden gems in here. And I love the fact that I can see the source code for each one of these if I want to know how the heck the developer did a particular thing. How do you secure your code? Make sure you can revert to previous versions and collaborate with other people on the same code base. Today, Git is one of the most popular source code versioning tools. It's available on all hardware platforms. It's well documented and maintained. I've been a faithful Git user for many years now. I'm working here on my Mac terminal and using Git in it to initialize a new Git project. And similar can be done from within VS Code or any other IDE. Git status will show which changes in my working directory haven't been tracked by Git yet. I will add the untracked hello streamlit Python file using git add, and then when I run git status again, I see that there's a new file that's being tracked. At this point, I want to create a version, a snapshot of my whole working directory, and I'll do that by running the git commit command. I will add an initial comment. Since I've just committed, git status will show that I have nothing to commit. And by running git log, I can see a list of all my versions, all my commits. I'm now using git to track local changes, but my computer where the code is currently stored is a single point of failure. So I use GitHub, a platform for securing and publishing all your open source projects with the community. I'm creating a new empty GitHub repository here, and once that repository is created, I will connect it with my local Git project. I do that by running the git remote command, and now I'm going to run git push to sync my local changes, my local code, with the remote repository on GitHub. Git status will now let us know that we are in sync with that remote repository, and git log will show us that our local changes have been synchronized with the remote repository. Streamlit made it possible for me to turn that learning process into fun or to add the fun component into it. Think about it as an investment too. It allows you to relatively quickly build a portfolio of your apps, your Python projects that you can showcase to your customers, whether they're external, like in my case, or you know, internal customers. Maybe you're a software engineer developing applications for a department or a portfolio of your own projects that speaks tons about your work, much more than you can say or put in your CV. Thanks for watching this video. If I've inspired you to start coding a Streamlit app right now, give me a thumbs up. 
Also, you might want to watch this video where I'm showing how I built an ESG investment dashboard on Streamlit using only data that I found on the Snowflake marketplace. Stay healthy and stay tuned.